Hello, welcome to this Substance Designer tutorial. In this one we're going to make uh, one of the textures that we use in um, Substance Painter. So we're going to start out with Substance Graph and we'll call it uh, My Texture. And I'm going to make it 4096 by 4096. I like to make them as big as I can. If that's too much for you then take it down to 2048 or even 1024 and click OK. There we go, so now we have a blank graph and we need to put our output node in. So press space to get search up and then type output or just out. And we're going to set the um, attributes here. So if I double click in the graph to get the graph attributes up, I hide the base parameters. Uh, I'll put my texture, I'll give it a label of my texture as well. Uh, the type we're going to go for a texture generator because you know we want something that's going to go into our textures bin okay so what i'm going to start with is uh, a tile so if i uh, press space and type in tile uh, g oops tile space g i get the tile generator up and this gives us a lot of options um, a lot of ways to put things together and we're just going to put a couple of uh, patterns together and plug them into this and then output them. Uh, but I'm first I'm going to set my X amount to 2 and my Y amount to 2. Uh, and I'm going to expose them because I want to be able to configure that within Substance Painter. So if I click on this little drop down here. I'll expose this new graft input and we'll call it X tile amount and click OK and the same for the Y. So expose graph as new input, so Y tile amount and then click OK. Now I can't access these from here anymore, I need to go to the graph level, so I'll double click on the graph and under my parameters somewhere here we go we've got x tile and y tile and we can uh, update those here right so what i want to do is actually put some patterns into these uh, squares so to do that i'm first going to change my uh, input wherever that's gone from brick to input image so I can now input a pattern into this to get something going. So what I'm going to do is press space and type in shape to get a shape up. And plug that in. And now it's tiling that shape a number of times. But I can't see it because this shape is filling the frame. So I need to give it a little bit of distance. Now just as a a uh, little cautionary tale here. Uh, sometimes, uh, if you have a lot of tiles on this, the input type, um, the input image filtering can cause it to have a little artifact. So I switch that to bilinear and that fixes that up. Right, so first of all, for my pattern, I want to change the shape scale down. Where's the size gone? There it is. Uh, so scale, scale, there. So from 1 to point, say 0.98 and now I've got a tile. Okay, so what we're going to do next is add a few nodes to transform this pattern into a more interesting shape. So I'll talk to you in the next. Okay, so what I want to do is put a cross into these tiles and the easiest way to do that is on the shape node uh, I can tile it. So if I tile it twice and then double click on my tile generator. Did that work? Did I actually tile it? Ah, well, <laughs> yeah, it is my mistake. Um, because the shape is 100% tiling it twice, I'm just going to get four, four white blocks. So what I need to do is just pull my scale down a bit. There we go. And now when I go over here, we should have what looks like lots of tiles. 
uh, but I'm going to break that up and make it a little bit more interesting because we can input more than one tile into here so if I double click on this tile and up the pattern input to two you'll see I get two black squares and two squares that are you know my pattern and I have a new pattern input and what I'm going to do is on this shape I'm going to duplicate it with control and D and if I plug that one into there we'll get back to where we were but what I actually want to do is rotate this so I can rotate it on the original and if I rotate it by say 45 degrees you'll see I get a different kind of pattern and I can adjust my scale down a little bit more so it fits within the box there we go and now I've got two different kinds of patterns I've got kind of a diamond pattern and I've got like a square pattern and you can adjust those you know with scale and all sorts of things as you want so you don't have to use squares obviously you know there's no you know nothing that says that that's the law uh, you can change this to discs for example and you get a nude pattern uh, or I could change this for uh, paraboloids and we'd get a weird pattern not a weird pattern but we get a pattern with very harsh ones and very soft ones so you could do a lot with just these two these uh, options to get some interesting shapes yeah you, know, you can even on the shape node I could change the scale of it in one direction to you know crush or squeeze um, a shape inwards so yeah you can get a lot of sort of different options out of it if I right click and drag and drop that onto my cube here and we'll just go for base color you'll see what you get uh, so what I'm going to do is just pop a couple of other nodes on this whoops let me uh, set this back to where I want it to be there we go let's just take that down uh, so yes I'm just going to use a couple of nodes to give a little bit of extra interest to this uh, so I'll talk to you in the next okay so um, this is a very 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 simple example uh, but you can make it much 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 more complicated of course and what we could do here is perhaps put a bevel into both of these so if I select this noodle here press space and bevel it will put a bevel node on top and you'll see what that does it kind of bevels things out but it comes in kind of strong so we just need to bring it down to a reasonable level uh, or up to a reasonable level depending upon how it works uh, so let's try angular instead you can see that you know I'm getting all sorts of weird and wonderful kind of effects here I'm almost getting a flower now so yeah I mean that's quite nice I can see that being used for a height map and now I can duplicate this with control shift and D which duplicates it without the connections and then I'll plug that into there and I'll plug that into there Let's see what we get and now we get sort of more diamonds and uh, almost clubs if you like so you could do all sorts of things with this you could you know process it in a number of ways you could warp it and distort it and do all sorts of crazy things but you know what I'm trying to show is just the way of getting a bunch of patterns out and into substance painter so what I'm going to do on the um, shapes is expose their shape parameter so on the pattern I'm going to expose as a new graph and I'll call this uh, pattern 1 and then say OK and for this one we'll do the same thing and we'll expose it as a new graph and call this one pattern 2 so that you know we know that one's pattern one and one's pattern two and then say okay and now we can save this package so right click save wait for it to come up my disk is slow apparently 
and there's a motorcycle outside don't know if you can hear that uh, so I'll save that as my texture and then I'll right click and we will uh, where is it publish publish SPSAR file and uh, I'll try and generate a missing icon but it really does not for this particular kind of setup anyway and then click OK right so the next one we'll have a look at what we can now do in Substance Painter okay so we're in Substance Painter now and I've got my SBSAR that I've just published and I'll drag and drop that onto my library and it comes in as a procedural uh, you don't have an option to change it and I'm going to import this to uh, my library and click import and you'll see it comes into your procedural uh, area and I've, I've got my you know it's generated me a, a preview there and I've just opened up uh, the tiling sample so open sample tiling material and I'll just get rid of all these and then I'll drag and drop that as a whoops no I won't drag and drop it <laughs> I'll put a fill layer in first and then I'll just turn everything off except color and drag and drop my texture into it there we go so now I have my lovely texture uh, it's tiled already four times because we're in the tiling sample uh, but down below we have all of our parameters so now I can switch these out and you know get all sorts of different uh, options up to you know get to where I want to be and well granted this is not the most useful <laughs> thing I've ever done um, you know I'm just trying to demonstrate how to you know create a texture and expose parameters and show those things uh, so I can also increase my tiling uh, by X and by Y and uh, we also have a random seed which will scatter our um, tiling um, randomly so that's down to if I go back to here uh, when we set this up to be a two tile input uh, the pattern input is set to random and when you're pressing that random seed it's just generating a new random number if you want this fixed to be always in quarters always one after the other you can set that to pattern number and it will always be so so if on the uh, the graph now I update this and increase my X and Y There we go, I'll just up that and then go and find the Y one. Whoops. Where's Y? There it is. And increase that as well. You'll see that it's always one after the other. They're always alternating. But if I go back to the tile generator and put this on random, uh, where did, where did <laughs> what have I done? What have I lost? Oh, I've lost something. Uh, there it is pattern input uh, pattern pattern input pattern input distribution if I put that by random you see it becomes random again I just wanted to show that because you know sometimes you want to control it so they're alternating other times having a random pattern is kind of nice and you know that's not a completely useless texture uh, I can see me using it maybe in a bank of lights you know to get a uh, you know, alternating light pattern uh, but we'll see anyway I hope you found that useful and uh, I'll talk to you in another session